Under the principle of the Contradas, which is the advanced ticketed tertia system, or an advanced technique in terms of the blade-to-blade -blade technique is concerned, is the familiarization of angular attacks. So attack number one comes into the left collarbone, right into the left collarbone, right into the neck. Attack number two comes into the right collarbone. Right collarbone, right into the neck, is the target area. So you have two numbers under the Contradas. That is number one. And then followed by number two. So my number one is here, and followed by number two on the set of the first contradas. So contradas is offense, counter offense. So for familiarization purposes and purpose of training, the attack number one is countered by your control in the cutting technique. So you really cut this, cut this in half. Then followed by your hand to control the blade. So for process of training, we do the principle of contradas. In preparation, you see the point of the blade. It could be thrust. It could be a vertical follow-up. So he does also, in terms of technique, using the counter-offensive technique by using the contradas method number one. So both fighters train in offensive and counter-offensive techniques. So attack number one. Counter, deliver, cut, I deliver, he cut, he controls, I get in. For closer infiltration, I use the control from the inside, and then I could step in and deliver the attack. I could cut, I could cut, and I could deliver my full blow attack. At the same time, I could disarm, I could control the legs by sweeping or by breaking. So Contreras is complete by its technique. Attack number one, you get out, he follows up, he gets in. You get in, you follow through, you go inside, you go inside, you go outside. Labo, palipas, pasugat, labo, labo, 
Lebo, lebo. Alright. So, as far as Contradas number one is concerned, we have what they call the offense and counter-offensive technique. You have a way of getting out by using your 45 degrees. The attack comes in there, you go into 45. Attack comes again, you go into your 90. Delivering the one, you follow your entry by using your labo and then your pasugat. The pasugat and the labo must meet together at the same time you control with your rest, at the same time you deliver the thrust, and then at this arm at the same time you cut and deliver your final blow. Using your ranging footwork, if you don't want to penetrate, then you go your 180 degrees turn, or you can go to your 90 degrees turn. If it is in full range, he delivers the blow, then you can get out on your 180 degrees. Again, deliver again, then you go into your 90. You have still the control. But the left hand is important because it is the left hand that controls the attack hand together with the weapon. But after you shiver this, then you could always control this hand. Whether you cut it or not, you must be able to control the weapon hand. So in terms of familiarization of the training, when you move, you go to your angle, you move to your necessary movements, and also the principle of the footwork. So you lift your legs. As soon as you change the motion, then you must be able to deliver your proper angling so that when you step in, then you could move. At the same time, you could turn and deliver while you are facing your enemy on the other side. Contradas is oriented on the multiple attacks, multiple enemies and multiple attackers. So when you want to learn the Contradas, be careful that you don't get cut. the Grand Magisterium of the Piquete Tertia Connection, we present to you Contradas number two. Labo, Pasunod, Palipat, Buno. In Contradas, we always familiarize ourselves as far as the continuity of the attack is concerned. So, in the Labo, this is the Labo, counter Labo. Palipas, labo, then control as far as the recounter is concerned. So when hitting in that manner, I will have to come in and follow through. In the same manner here, if there is another labo, he could control me or he, I can control him. So in the process, while we are hitting the labo, the palipas, then he uh, do the pasugat. Pasugat is a controlled set technique wherein the empty hands here controls while he delivers the cut right underneath. So you notice that in this delivery, I hit first and then I follow with the hand. Here, he comes up with the hand, follow with the blade. So this is called the Contradas number two. So in the principle, if I come in here, direct, the same principle as the Pasugat, then in the same manner, if he will use this principle, then I will have to control this, I deliver this. While we are hitting the labo, the palipas, then he uh, do the pasugat. Pasugat is a controlled set technique wherein the empty hands here controls while he delivers the cut right underneath. So you notice that in this delivery, I hit first and then I follow with the hand. Here, he comes up with the hand, follow with the blade. So this is called the Contradas number two. So in the principle, if I come in here, direct, the same principle as the Pasugat, then in the same manner, if he will use this principle, then I will have to control this, I deliver this. You see? So in the techniques, there is a continuity of the flow as far as the Contradas is concerned. So the attack number one here, I come in, he goes back there. Yes? Now, 
You control the elbow so that you could come in and pass this out and then deliver. Or from this point, you could let this push it down. At the same time, you deliver the blow. So he also controlled uh, the, uh, the weapon hand by paring it down. So the attack comes in there. He follows it through. I control that. I can come in and control it back. He delivers again. He delivers again. I control it. I control it. I comes back. Then I follow through. I follow through. Then I follow through. So the flow is there. Come in. The flow. Uh, we have the flow now. So this means that in the continuity of the motion, the continuity of the motion as far as the contradas is concerned, you can always familiarize yourself with the movements. Now, you wave your body out so that you will be out of the direction of the attack. There. Comes in the floor. All right. So, in the contradas, the flow is important. There must always be a bridging principle involved. Again, in the first set of the attack, this is the counter attack. You cut here, after you cut, then you go inside, the pasugat. So your labo, palipas, pasugat, buno. In his principle, he parries also, because it is coming in here, he parries this out. Then he follow, and then he cut, and then I get out again. I comes, he comes back, I follow it up. Then it comes back. Then the continuity of the flow is concerned. So when you emphasize the technique, you see to it that the flow must be continuous. Then follow through, then comes back, then miss it. Then comes back again, follow through again. So you have a single labo, followed by pasugat, pasugat, labo, palipas. Palipas, sugat, labo, palipas, pasugat, palipas, labo. Pasugat, buno, pawas. Then, palipas, pasugat, palipas, pasugat, labo, labo, labo. Pasugat, labo. Palipas. 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 Labo, buno. Palipas. Buno. Palipas. Pawas. Palipas. So in contradas, you have to be familiar yourselves as far as the flow is concerned and the continuity of the motion. So in between, you can insert any technique. But the flow is that you must have the continuity of motion. Palipas, palipas, pasugat, labo, palipas. Palipas. This means that you are conditioning yourself to accept the blade while you are actually training with the blade. Pasugat, labo, pawas. Labo, pasibat. Palipas, palipas. Pasugat, labo, buno, kuha. Palipas, labo, pasugat, pasugat. Labo. We'll be seeing that, that soon. That, that uh, kind of training. Yes. First, we can uh, slash the falling, uh, the, down, the downpour of the water or the waterfalls. Yes. You know? uh, in such a speed that when we cut the water, is that we maintain the force that we can still cut through and through without uh, disturbing the balance and also the cutting. Uh, or the losing the form. form. Or losing the form or losing the, the cutting uh, targets. Yes. The second aspect of training is the wind training, meaning we can work for three hours on uh, imaginative training yes. by slashing, by doing a circular motion, by doing a vertical motion, by thrusts, 
because we are in the principle of called bridging the gap. Mm. Meaning to say, if we deliver this, we see to it that we bridge it back. So when we deliver, we return. Mm -hmm. So there will be no time for the enemy to recover. Mm -hmm. So we cover every angle of uh, opening mm. so that when we deliver a circular motion, we cover it back with another circular motion. If we do a slash motion, we cover a slash motion or a slash and a thrust motion. So this is what we call the bridge, bridging the gap. I've seen that from my own experience in, in training with you, that Pekiti Tersh is a constantly flowing system that goes around and around. No action is finite or finished. It constantly flows into another action, always enabling you to be in a position, well, in a better position than your opponent. We are a martial arts that is non-block oriented and non-stance oriented. Yes. We don't believe in stances, we don't believe in blocks, yes. because this is a blade. We don't condition the individual to block because by blocking, you lost the momentum. By a split of a second, we can get in. Mm -hmm. So if you intend to block our blade, then forget it. You lost your life. <laughs> There's no such thing as blocking. There's such thing as stances. When we see that your legs are stretched, uh, we cut that legs. Yes. Every time you remove your hand to the front and we see to it that you don't remove it, we cut it anyhow. So it's not your a... Your fingers will do the walking. Not a passive martial art. No. <laughs> I don't believe in passive martial arts. If we want to know the martial arts, go to the throwest art. That's the only answer. Yes. Then I believe, because when the original art is being presented here, mm -hmm. uh, there is no adulteration and there is no impurification. Yes. Uh, it must be the truth. Yes. Because if we will be teaching half truth, then we are not truly, truly teaching the truly traditional mm. art or the real Filipino Malay art. S speaking of beliefs, it's, it's interesting that you say that. What's the philosophy behind Bikini Tertia? The philosophy is a beautiful philosophy. <coughs> and I've been emphasizing this in my teachings and my seminars and different parts of the world. <laughs> that as far as a Filipino tradition is concerned, a Filipino culture is concerned, they believe in three principles. Three principles. One, they believe in life, they don't believe in death. Two, they believe in success, they don't believe in failures. Three, they believe in good health, they don't believe in sickness. Meaning, if you have a, a blade in your hand, you have the ginunting in your hand, and I'm the ginunting in my hand, we must have to believe in life. He believes in life, I believe in life. Meaning to say, if you believe in life, you don't come to me and harass me, and you intend to kill me because I will have to kill you. Yes. But because I don't believe in death, I don't like to die. Yes. Because death has no place in me, and neither in you. Yes. So as far as the art is concerned, the philosophy is very strong. Uh -huh. We believe in life, we don't believe in death. When I hold this blade, I see to it that you're gonna die. Yes. Because I'm going only to live, because that's what I believe. Secondly, I believe in success. I have to succeed in fighting you. Yes. I don't believe in failures because failure to me is death. Yes. I believe in good health. I don't believe in sickness. Meaning, I have to keep myself in perfect shape. I don't abuse my body. I don't use my, I abuse my mind. My spirit is always on the high level, high caliber intensity. Mm -hmm. uh, my system is in a full uh, uh, turbo type of uh, energy. Mm -hmm. So that when I come in in three seconds, I blow you apart. There's no second place in blade fighting. There is no second place. Yes. There is only a place, and that is the place of Piggy Detergent. Survival. Yes. This certainly must be true for your art, to, for your family to have survived, for this art to have survived in the Philippines in a warlike um, land that it was for, for so many centuries. Um, from what I've seen traveling all over, this is something really particularly individually rare to martial arts. It's not only that. This philosophy is adaptable to your daily life, mm. whether you're a doctor, whether you're an engineer, or whether you're a businessman, because the philosophy brings about a new style of thinking. That is, you don't want defeat, and you are in not in a negative way of life. Yes. If you have philosophy of believing life, then death has no meaning. So, as far as the success of an individual is concerned, he must have this philosophy. Mm. This philosophy, as a matter of fact, must be universal. Mm. Because if once somebody believes in life, then there is no killing. Yes. If somebody believes in life, then there is no uh, way wherein somebody will have to take advantage of somebody. Meaning that if you feel secure about yourself in, in, in your place and what you can do, there's no reason for harassing anyone. There's nobody. Yeah. There's nothing to, to do to harass somebody, or you don't need to harass somebody. Yeah. But what is important is that you have a respect for life. Mm. So, our philosophy, and the philosophy of our forefathers, mm. 
brings about a culture, a beautiful culture. Because out of this philosophy, it breeds respect. Mm -hmm. I believe in life, and you believe in life. Yes. When I carry this blade, and you carry that blade, I have to respect you, and you have to respect me. Yes. So the philosophy is the bridging mm -hmm. <coughs> mechanism mm -hmm. <coughs> wherein respect can be developed. Mm -hmm. After we have practiced this respect, then it brings about what is called care and concern. Mm -hmm. Meaning, your family is my concern. Mm -hmm. My family is your concern. Mm -hmm. I care for you wherever you go, and you care for me what happens. Mm -hmm. That is the really the, the, the true meaning of the Filipino tradition. The culture, there must be care and concern. Thirdly, you must have hospitality. Yes. After we practice this respect, uh, concern and care, then I invite you to my house, we eat together, we drink together, we have guests that are coming to the house, they don't have the money, we share together and let them eat and let them sleep. Well, I, sure, I certainly have experienced your hospitality staying here for the last three weeks, and I'm looking forward to it for the next uh, three weeks or so. I really have enjoyed it. And you have to practice the martial arts, and you'll never be in the hospital. <laughs> Speaking of your forefathers, can you tell us something um, about your family, the ones that, that developed this art? Well, uh, my uncle here, uh, Nini Tortal, uh, his father and my grandfather are brothers. They are all sparring partners. That's right. The other brothers are also good brothers that, you know, sometimes in the family, uh -huh. you know, each one has his also his own uh, clique. Yes. So his father and my grandfather were all, they are in cliques. Right. So we are now what they call the remnants uh -huh. and the inheritors and the ears to the pediatricians. Yes. A combination of our technology is something that nobody uh, has ever enjoyed it. So now that we have agreed to each other in presenting this to the world and presenting to the uh, martial arts community, uh -huh. we will educate the people, we will educate the martial arts, and we will educate also especially our own students and pediatricians. Yes. <laughs> that as far as the system is concerned, mm -hmm. they have to preserve it, they have to be loyal to it, and they should create the patriotism as far as the system is concerned. Yes. And as far as the Filipino art is concerned, it is the name of the game. It is survival in the later years and the years to come, the future depends on how you can motivate yourself in training as far as building you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Mm. So the Piggy Tertia is the Cohen word for survival. To Untortal, is there something that you would like to say? It's okay. The same or so. Maybe yeah. a little bit about the history or techniques it's or anything? The same or so. <laughs> no, that's why you know, he doesn't want to say something because you know, he doesn't want to tell the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> Because when he says something, then the secret comes out. I know. It took me a long time to get him to teach me before. As a matter of fact, uh, the more you give him money, the more he doesn't want to teach you. Yes. <laughs> That's the tradition. He is more of a traditional type, and I'm more of a uh, non-traditional. Yes. But bringing about the truth as far as the art is concerned, we are not bragging. We are not telling everybody that we are the most, uh, uh, shall we say, superior system in the Philippines. No. We are only telling everybody the truth as far as the true culture is concerned. Because if you, have a, you are a true Filipino cultured martial artist, never adulterate the technique that has been perfected, has been uh, put into a laboratory, it has been tried and tested, and it costs lots of life to perfect one technique. You never had any other training besides the Filipino martial arts? Uh, to be honest with you, I have a training uh, with uh, Silat. Silat. Uh, but as far as weaponry is concerned, I don't have. No, I mean, I mean before in your in your uh, life when you were growing up, uh, learning Pekiti Tertia, you never had any training in karate or kung fu or anything. No, no. You, you, you learned only from your family. Yeah, no, no. I touch a little bit of this. I'll touch a little bit of that and see what is really all about it. But I never really had a formal training. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw what they're doing, and I see to it. I, I saw the time, I said, why, uh, why this, uh, this art is more of a regimented art? Yes. You see, our art is a non-regimented art. Mm -hmm. it is go our art, is our technique is governed by what they call the uh, action-interaction. For every motion, there is a counter-action. Mm -hmm. So uh, the technology behind this art is beyond compare, because we could have a marathon of technique for three days, we'll never run out. We have a bodega of techniques, mm -hmm. guaranteed. Well, I know I'm certainly satisfied uh, in my training, and I'm very happy and honored to have both of you as my teachers. And uh, I hope that I can come back again soon and make more tapes with you. 
Well, uh, it's not uh, it's not all the tapes that count here. It's uh, the presentation that we have we are doing here right now is to uh, provide the opportunity for everybody. Uh, first, for those who had uh, studied with me, I think they will be more happy to see me in the in, in the uh, in here the video. Is. <laughs> and uh, they'll be more happy also to know that I'm still in good health. Yes. And as I'm uh, young as I am, I can still uh, provide the technology. Yes. Now, uh, two heads are better than one. With uh, my uncle here, who is the uh, uh, technologist in terms of uh, deeper training, I mean deeper techniques in the Piggy Church, yeah? To uh, those who would like to know about the Filipino martial arts, I encourage you. There are tapes that are coming out now uh, uh, from uh, one of my best instructors, Bill McGrath. I'm endorsing his tape. Uh, the tape also for uh, being produced by Eric Canos. Uh, I am endorsing the tape also. And for those who would like to come out and say they have the uh, connection as far as Piketty Tertia is concerned, we will have that endorsement provided that they should come back to us and say we are still uh, uh, something that is missing in us that we would like also some supplementary uh, technology as far as the system is concerned. Yes. And those who have studied me for a long time, uh, for the last 20 years, they say they are still something that is missing. Because as I said, we have a marathon of techniques and this technique will never end. The world will end. Our technique will never, will, never end. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tuan Gahi and Tuan Torto. Uh, this has been Tuan Leo Gahi and Tuan Nene Torto from Negros. Thank you. <laughs>